Okay guys, um, we're gonna go ahead and check the valve clearance on the John Deere 145 here. This is on the Briggs & Stratton V-Twin. Um, this really applies to any Briggs & Stratton Intech engine. I already have kind of pulled the valve covers off so they're just loose right now. We're gonna just pull this one off right here. Each of these valve covers have uh, four 10 millimeter bolts in them. So I, I take these off the other day just to kind of peek at them and they do seem to be pretty loose. These come off, you're gonna spill a little bit of oil. It kind of leaked a little bit down here on the floor. So just be mindful of that. These right here are called the rocker arms because this is a push rod engine. It's an overhead valve or push rod. The way it works is right here on the side, these are called the push rods and these um, ride on the lobes of the cam, which are back in side here, basically right on top of the uh, crankshaft. And they push up and they'll push this rocker arm out. There's a, a fulcrum or a pivot point right here. And then they push down. And over here on this side, these are your, your two valves for, this is one of the cylinders. So you have, you have an intake and an exhaust valve. Your exhaust valve is one on the bottom because here's your exhaust right here and your intakes on the, on the top. Basically the way that you check these is you rotate the motor to where one of the two is fully pushed out. So right there you can see, do it again. You can see that, that the bottom one is moving back in and now the top one is moving out. So we're gonna move it to where this one is all the way out. So that means this one is just at rest, so to speak. So that looks like a lot of slop to me. It's not crazy, but I mean, I can definitely move that in and out a little bit. There's supposed to be four thousandths of an inch of space between this and the top of the valve. These are called the valve springs. And then the actual valve is the little bit right in the center there. It's a stem that goes inside and on the other end is the actual valve. It pushes it in, which opens the valve up, and then it comes back out and it's closed. There's a good bit of movement here, um, and I can, you know, I can move it in and out. There's supposed to be four thousandths of an inch. What that equates to is about the thickness of human hair. The way you check it is you take a feeler gauge. These are feeler gauges, and you have all different thicknesses of these. And I had four, I mean, like this one right here, this is would be 35 thousandths or 0 0.035 of an inch. It also is in millimeters, would be 0.88 millimeters. And that's pretty thick. I mean, that's, you know, you can see that. We're looking for 0 0.004, which is right here. So, I mean, very, very thin, like, you know, almost like the thickness of a sheet of paper. So now that this one is at rest, so it's not being pushed out by the cam lobe at all. Now, you know, doesn't really feel that terrible. We're gonna definitely tighten up a little bit, but you should be able to put it in and feel drag on it. So it's definitely a little bit too loose. Um, the specs, there's actually three to five thousandths of an inch. Um, but what I've seen, um, we're just gonna go with four, it's right in the middle. The way you adjust it is you have, it's a star or like a Torx, an actual hex bolt. The hex bolt is what locks it into place. Then you actually turn it with the, the star bit. We're gonna find out what size that is. Nope, let's, let's see how close is that. All right, so it looks like it's gonna be 13 millimeter, which of course I don't have here. Great, there's 13. <clears throat> How you, you loosen this up and then we're going to turn using a Torx bit and I'll see what size that is. Yeah, okay, it looks like that's it. So it's a T30 Torx bit. And that, that turns so freely that you can just, you know, you need a, a socket on it. So what are we going to do? We need to turn it. So that loosens it up. So you want to, we're going to turn it righty tighty to tighten it up. So right there, it's tight. I can't pull it out. 
or very it's very difficult. So loosen up just a little bit like that. There's some drag. Like, you know, like it's not gonna hold it in there, but you can feel there's some drag on it. So I'm gonna say that's good. I mean, you gotta put this over and we gotta hold this in place while we tighten it. So you have to use a, a like a, a box end wrench for this. You can't use a, a socket because you have to be able to hold. And you can certainly put a ratchet on this um, just to like make sure that it doesn't move, but I'm making sure that it stays still. Okay, well, I actually loosened up a little bit when I did that. And these these are actually very easy. If this was like a car engine, you wouldn't be able to you can't you couldn't be able to compress that like that. So there's not a lot of spring tension there. All right, I'm gonna adjust that a little bit better. Seem to uh, move a little bit maybe. Might make it a little bit tighter and then see what happens once it's tightened down. Maybe that's maybe it loosens up a little bit when you go to tighten it. <laughs> yeah. They kind of loosen up again. Maybe I need something better to hold that. too much. Still feels pretty good. Hmm. It's probably okay, but Let's do the other one and we'll, just, we'll come back to it and just check it again. So you're just going to turn the motor. Um, I'm turning it clockwise. I'm pretty sure that's how it spins. You don't really want to turn them backwards. So we do it until the bottom one comes out. Okay. Damn hose in the way here. Yes, that one's really loose. And again, it's three to five. So if it is, if the four is just a hair loose, whoa, that was fun. Then it still should be okay. And again, it's a lawnmower. It's, you know, as they say, it's not the space shuttle. But we do seem to have a little bit of an issue with uh, it wanting to start turn easily because of that decompression valve, which may or may not be affected by this or not. You know, I'm not sure. All right, so I'm gonna 
leave it where it's tight enough to hold it. And then it seems like you gotta put this on loosen mode in order to be able to hold that, on the ratchet that is, so it's on loosen. And we tighten it up. A little bit too tight. The uh, gauge falls out. Pretty tight. It's not much of a wiggle room there. That feels perfect. Like it's holding it, but it's really easy to move it out. So, I'm gonna try to hold that position. Ugh. I feel like I just want it to be a little bit tighter. I'm probably obsessing over this more than I need to. I kind of feel like it's better to do it just with the thing, with the, the Torx bit. Because you don't need any force on this thing at all. Yeah, I guess I didn't look at it, did I? Yeah. going with that where it just wants to hold it perfect all right I'm leaving that alone just snug it a little bit tighter go back and check the other one feels a little bit too loose again. So I feel like put it in there, tighten it until it holds it in place, but just barely, and then tighten it down. Did I lose my four? Nope. Still it. Yeah. I mean, it's noticeably better. Like you can you can move it, but before, like it was definitely more. I don't know if it was enough to be really an issue. So we'll have to see, but. I definitely feel like that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then we'll put it all back together and we'll just see how the thing spins over. We did resolve the issue with 
uh, the starting where it was really weak to start. Um, we've done a valve adjustment and I also put a brand new battery in it. Uh, it turned out the battery was definitely a little bit weaker than I had thought. We'll just go ahead and start it up, put the choke on, but it's on uh, idle. So. Starts right up. Runs great, spins fast, everything is good. So the valve adjustment and also a new battery. I went ahead and got the expensive battery. I think it's a 300 cold cranking amp. You can get, um, they had like a 190. I think the one that was in here was 280. So I just said, screw it. And I spent like probably way too much. I spent like $45 at, at Home Depot on that. But I was like, you know, I'm gonna keep this thing. So we'll just go ahead and give it a good battery. And uh, everything I'm doing with this, I'm doing it as the intention of me keeping it and using it and not having to worry about it and just get on and mow the grass. So I'm spending a lot of time on it right now, but hopefully I won't have to do much more than just your basic maintenance, oil changes, blade sharpening, that kind of stuff for several years after I've done.